Hello, Nephew community. I'm Dr. Jeff Lockwood with Dr. Brad Lamott here for Nephew. Today, we're going to discuss the classification and diagnostic criteria of hyponatremia. When we're discussing hyponatremia, we're talking about a serum sodium level of less than 135 millimoles per liter. And when we have a low sodium state, a common first step in classifying hyponatremia is to look at plasma tonicity, where we have three classes of hyponatremia. First is isotonic or normal osmolar hyponatremia, where we have a normal plasma osmolality, somewhere between 280 and 295 milliosmoles per kilo. This can be caused by hyperglycemia or could be a pseudo hyponatremia caused by hyperlipidemia or hyperproteinemia. Next, we could have a hypertonic or hyperosmolar hyponatremia, where we have a high plasma osmolality, somewhere above 295 milliosmoles per kilo. This can be caused by severe hyperglycemia coupled with dehydration, recent mannitol or sorbitol usage, or recent administration of radio contrast. And thirdly, we can have a hypotonic or hypoosmolar hyponatremia, which is the most common form. And this is where we have a low plasma osmolality below 280 milliosmoles per kilo. Now with hypotonic hyponatremia, it's very important to assess the patient's volume status. If we look at a urine osmolality, we can classify hypotonic hyponatremia in two ways. First, we can have maximally dilute urine with an osmolality of less than 100 milliosmoles per liter. And we see this with conditions that cause excessive thirst and water intake, like psychogenic polydipsia. And secondly, we can see inappropriately concentrated urine with an osmolality greater than 200 milliosmoles per liter. This is where we can see a failure of the body to excrete water in a normal fashion. And here is where we can further classify hyponatremia into three categories. First, is hypovolemic hyponatremia, where we have a low total body water and a low total body sodium in which the sodium deficit exceeds the water deficit. We see a reduced extracellular fluid level with no edema or ascites on physical exam. When we look at the composition of the plasma, we see an elevated BUN, an elevated creatinine, and an elevated BUN to creatinine ratio. This can be caused by excessive diuretic usage, osmotic diuresis, mineralocorticoid deficiency, salt losing nephritis, vomiting, or diarrhea. Patients can present with numerous signs and symptoms like lethargy, dizziness, excessive thirst, orthostatic hypotension, decreased skin turgor, and other more nonspecific symptoms like weight loss, anorexia, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Next, we can have a hypervolemic hyponatremia, where we have an increased total body water that exceeds our increase in total body sodium. We generally see a large increase in extracellular fluid, which may bring with it pulmonary congestion, edema, or ascites that can be found on physical exam. Plasma evaluation typically shows an elevated BNP and a high BUN. We see hypervolemic hyponatremia with conditions like congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome, and acute or chronic kidney failure. When our patients present, they may be experiencing a range of clinical complications, including dyspnea with minimal exertion, orthopnea, lethargy, confusion, cyanosis, jugular venous distension, and pitting edema in the lower extremities. Lastly, we can have euvolemic hyponatremia, where we see an increase in total body water, which is typically ABP-mediated water retention, with our total body sodium remaining unchanged. We typically see an increase in extracellular fluid, but we do not tend to see edema or ascites on physical exam. When we look at the composition of the plasma, we see a low BUN and a low serum uric acid. Euvolemic hyponatremia is most commonly caused by the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, or SIADH, which I will now kick over to Dr. Brad Lamott to go over SIADH diagnostic criteria a little more in depth. Thanks, Jeff. I am going to finish out today's podcast by talking about SIADH, and how to diagnose patients with SIADH. SIADH is the most common form of euvolemic hyponatremia, and it accounts for about 60% of cases of chronic hyponatremia. It is also the most common cause of hyponatremia in the hospital setting. This is typically due to medication usage, infection, or the presence of a neoplasm. It can also be caused by glucocorticoid deficiency associated with an increase in AVP release or hypothyroidism. In these patients, vasopressin or ADH secretion may be independent of plasma osmolality or vasopressin may be inadequately suppressed. This is recognized 
as inappropriate only in relation to the hypotonicity of body fluids. Assessing the volume status in patients with hyponatremia is extremely important. In patients who are likely to be diagnosed with SIDH, the clinical signs and symptoms are difficult to spot. While there is an increase in total body water and extracellular fluid, there is an absence of edema or ascites. This is where understanding the essential diagnostic criteria is very important in patients with euvolemic hyponatremia. There are five components. First, a decrease in effective osmolality of the extracellular fluid, a plasma, os plasma osmolality of less than 275 milliosmoles per kilo. Second, inappropriate urinary concentration, a urine osmolality of greater than 100 milliosmoles per kilo with normal renal function at some level of hypoosmolality. Third, patients are clinically euvolemic. There are no signs of hypovolemia, including orthostasis, tachycardia, decreased skin turgor, or dry mucous membranes. They also show no signs of hypervolemia, which includes subcutaneous edema or ascites. Fourth, patients have elevated urinary sodium excretion despite normal salt and water intake. And last, patients have no other potential cause of euvolemic hypoosmolality. For example, hypothyroidism, hypocortisolism, or diuretic resistance. And that's going to wrap it up for us. Thanks to the NEPHEW community for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed the discussion. We will see you next time here on NEPHEW.